if I'm considering three or four painting uh, reference pictures to use, I might then decide which color background is the right fit. You know, and in architecture, there's just a lot of a lot of little details here. So a lot of time spent doing that. Okay, this is the last time lapse I'm showing. This is a pretty big piece. It was 20 something by 42 inches wide. Um, this is from reference pictures I took from our trip to Iceland. We were there in 2013. I, um, I did, I've done several paintings from that trip based on my photographs afterwards. And um, they've always been really popular with my collectors and, and uh, visitors to the gallery. It's, um, it fits my sort of bleak but beautiful aesthetic. And, uh, and that's kind of how I, how I like to find landscapes a lot of the times. And of course, there were these beautiful mountains and glaciers and just endless views and black sand and that, you know, never ending sky was amazing. This piece is in a collection in DC. All right. Oh, I was wrong. There is one more. I'm sorry. This is, uh, this is another Souderton piece that I did that won an award this year at the uh, Souderton Art Jam virtual show for the Fine Art Award. Um, this one is uh, one of our little side streets, Second Street. Um, it's sold to a, to a guy who uh, grew up one street over about 50 years ago. And when he saw it, he nearly teared up thinking about his childhood, which was, which was amazing to see. Um, I don't think this time lapse goes all the way to the end, but it's um, you know, like sort of like driven on snowy streets with the ruts from the tires. And you can see where the cars have turned and all of that stuff. It was a real challenge in a good way. And I was really pleased with the way it turned out happy to get the award and sell it to someone who loved it so much. Okay. Oh, we're back at the beginning with Heather. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to, um, this is the piece I'm going to, do a little bit of a demonstration for you guys. It's um, it's a kind of like a farm scene that I drive by once in a while. It's got this uh, really great little stream here up in the bottom. And they had this um, like a little red shed that they had put out there. And I think it's like a movable portable shed for chickens. And it's a really great expansive property with these rolling hills and valleys and I painted here before and really enjoyed it. So um, I'm going to I'm going to start doing this and basically what we're going to do is um, it's important to understand the way the oil pastel works and every every oil pastel crayon has a, a color has a slightly different opacity and a slightly harder or softer um, sort of body to it the way the consistency of the wax is. So it's fortunate that they maintain the recipes for a very long time and that they don't, um, they don't really change their color line too much. So after working with this for all these years, I have a really good sense of which piece to use and when. So when I'm working these, um, I wanna get this like rich blue sky that I, that I can see in the picture. And what I'll show you later is that I have the picture is on my monitor, which is, not that far from me. It's on a movable tilt on the wall. It's a pretty big screen. I use a, right now I'm using a 55 inch TV as a monitor. It's kind of crazy. Um, but this way I don't print out reference pictures. I have a mouse here on my drafting table where I'm painting. I can scroll around and zoom in. It comes into play with bigger work. So I know that I'm going to use this crayon to help um, soften up what goes up on top of it and make sure I don't get too, like some too insane of a color. And sometimes a little bit's all that really is needed to make that happen. Okay, and then I'm gonna, I mean, I'm, even though I said, it, you know, smaller pieces, the smaller crowns, I like for skies, I like to use the bigger crowns that allows me uh, to create a softer, smoother texture. Okay, and as you go through, you really want to try to think about things like where are the clouds? Like I know there's a cloud in here, you know, and I know there are some other clouds down here and the rest of them are small enough that I'll be able to kind of work them in. So we'll just keep, keep working. And the name of the game here is to kind of just keep working until 
the color starts becoming what I want it to be. So now, let's see here. Okay, so this guy's got a little bit of a, like more of like a purplish tint to it. So I'm gonna come back in and I apologize for any shadows here from the lights coming. The irony is at night, I have, I have windows all around my studio, which is great, but at night there's less glare from outside for a presentation like this and more shadows. Okay. And at this stage, I'm not too worried about the little details. I don't, you know, I don't want it to get too tight. I don't want to work too much in one area. I will work the sky first, mostly because I'm going to end up putting my hand in something else if I don't start at the top. Okay. Uh, here we go. Now, this is a nice light warm blue here. Now I want to start thinking about getting this color at the bottom blended up into what's going to happen at the top. The other thing that happens with the oil pastels is because it's wax, it's, it literally requires time to, it can get, it can get too warm. It can just need time to like cool off. Um, if you work it too much and scribble too much, it literally just becomes a goopy mess and you have to stop and let it cool down. And that's when you curse a little bit and you walk away and you come back and you get back to work. Okay, I try to stay in the lines around the edge, but again, I'm not too worried about it. Um, at the end, at the very end, I'll touch up the color around the outside and clean it up before I put it in a frame so that my customer gets a finished looking piece. Okay. Now I'm using a little more pressure all the time. Each, each color, a little more pressure. Each time I do that, it's gonna help blend the color on the surface and make this color just really feel on top. If you have questions during this, feel free to interrupt. Okay. And sometimes I just spend time looking for the right color, which is almost unavoidable. And I want to, what I'd like to do now is just introduce a little bit of white here, just a little bit to lighten up this section at the bottom. I know my hand's kind of in the way. Um, white's a really potent color here, just like in a lot, of, a lot of other paints. And you really can't undo some of what happens here if you want to. And at this point, I mean, like at this, this part, I'm using very little pressure. It's almost like I'm not even pushing at all. Okay, and whether I'm using a whole stick or a part of a stick or a tiny little piece, I use every little, every little piece of oil pastel. You'll see here all these little pieces. I don't, no oil pastel gets left behind. Okay. Now you'll see that with that little addition of white, these colors down here really start to blend together. You may also see that this color is able to, one color is able to pull another color through into another area. So you can kind of blend them together. But you can actually move color around too. Um, not as much as like a palette knife with oil paint, but you still can.
Harry, somehow you got on mute, I think. There we go. So thank you, Gary. So I've been yeah. talking this whole time. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm sorry, everybody. I've been talking about the different colors and how they all, how this is working. Um, I've been talking about how um, the oil pastel is, um, I think one interesting thing is that the oil pastel kind of does get warm, almost too hot when you work it. So a lot of scribbling and it, it warms up, it loosens up and it just becomes like a, like a looser wax. So you really need to kind of work the whole surface. Um, I need to be All right, the host muted me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Therese. Um, and you, you'll see here, it's maybe a little hard to see because my hands in the way, but the one oil pastel is able to sort of not just blend, but actually push color a little bit around. It's not the same as having a palette knife with, with like oil paint or acrylic paint, but you can essentially move color from one area to the other. It's a little tricky. And it has a lot to do with the sort of temperature of the, of the material. So this here, this is going to be one of my last passes on the sky with the white before I get to the clouds and things. So at this point, I could stop. I could leave it kind of rough, but I like it to be a little more even than this. So I'm going to come back with a sort of medium kind of a blue here. And um, they do have names for their colors, but they're on the wrapper on the oil pastels. and they tend to get worn off. So if anybody has questions about the colors, um, I'm gonna give my email at the end. You're welcome to email me or stop by and ask me what you want. Okay, so now you see it's starting to come together. The texture starts evening up. I'm able to work my way down from the top. I don't want my marks to be too even. Like I still want, I still want it to look like a person did it, you know, but I do wanna, even things out a little bit. And I want to fill in the voids from the, um, there are, uh, there's texture from like the brush from gessoing the panel. I'm sorry. Uh, can I talk a little bit about my background to prime them? Yeah. So uh, I like using MDF or um, Masonite. They're both, uh, they're two different products. And if you're not familiar with them, they're basically considered a, a hardboard material, which is like a, kind of like sawdust and glue all mixed together and formed into a sheet. And um, I like it because it's nice and smooth. It's pretty thin, it's lightweight and it, uh, it does the job. What I do is I, I cut the panels, I sand the edges, I gesso them with um, two to three coats of gesso on the edges and both sides, the front and back, because these products have uh, weird adhesives and other kinds of things in them. and I. I like to think that these paintings will be around for a long time and I don't want to do anything to hurt them. Once that's done, I, um, I mix up a sort of uh, combination of um, like a rough, a roughish kind of gesso and, and, um, and color. So I always keep like um, spaghetti sauce jars and things like that around. I mix up a batch of color and I'll use that for multiple panels and save it at the end for touching up. So that's kind of like, that's how it goes and it ends up with a texture kind of like like a really smooth sanded pastel paper. There's a watch. You know, it has a um, it has a uh, kind of like a, like a little bit of tooth to hold the pastel. You're welcome. And then and then of course I do my ink drawing and you know start painting after that. So, okay. So this is this is getting to a point where I'm I'm pretty happy with with how this is um, Got this little really pale purple that's real soft here. I can do that with the with the knowledge that I'm gonna come back with a real pale warm blue to, to offset it. I don't like messing with the color too much of the stage, but it needs to get where I want it to be. Okay, so now the white I'm just using to kind of blend it a little bit. And then we'll come back with this light color here again. Okay. 
Now, at this point, the sky itself is basically done. So now I want to start addressing the clouds. And um, I always leave little voids for the clouds because they don't really, the one pastel won't really cover the other one too much. So in areas like down here, I'm just kind of touching it and giving it the hint of a cloud. Um, I like to try to stay relatively true to my reference pictures. So I don't want to mess with them too much. I don't have a problem. You know, I'm not trying to make a photographic reproduction of it, but I like to capture the moment that I'm waiting for. And that's the reference picture I use. So if I take a reference picture of something and I say, oh, it'd be nice if this cloud was like this or this tree was like that. I try to change my angle and get it how I want. So I have it in a picture. When I come back to paint it, it's ready to go. And I know what I was thinking. You know, and, and clouds are one of those things like nobody knows what that cloud looked like. Could be anything. All right. This is kind of like a little tall cloud here. Now, you'll, you may be able, I don't know if you can see it on here, but there are points in this process where I will end up pressing much harder and trying to leave a little bit of, um, almost like a brush mark, a mark from the pastel to leave some texture. You know, I want to make sure people feel that a person did this. It's always important. Let's see here. I don't have any series planned. Um, the question is, do I have any series planned this year? I've done some um, series pieces. I had done a project called 365 Monsters that had me drawing a monster every day for a year. And I had done a uh, creamers project where I was drawing the little creamer packets every day. And then I presented them as like one big piece with uh, the first 30 of them sort of sequentially matted in a multi-window mat and a big frame. I don't have anything planned though. I would like to revisit the idea of a series at some point this year. I don't have a wrestling name, John. Thank you for asking that. My avatar with the luchador mask was a very thoughtful gift. I was the best man in the, my friend's wedding and all the groomsmen got their own custom luchador mask. And I understand that um, anybody can have these made and um, I highly recommend everyone get one. They make excellent avatar pictures. Okay, so now that I've got these clouds in and I know where they're gonna be, I'm gonna kind of let them sit for a minute. I don't wanna, um, I don't want to overdo them and they're kind of getting a little warm. So at this point, I'm going to take my, this is a bamboo pen. I have used it. You'll see, you see ink on both ends. I have used it to draw, but in this case, I'm using it to just scratch off the, um, the oil pastel that's in places where this black line is because I need to be able to see it. So I know where my drawing is. And there we go. And Gary, if I'm starting to run out of time, let me know. I don't want to. I don't want to delay people. Okay. So I'd like to put in. I'm going to put in a couple little shadows on the clouds. I think that 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 always adds to the dimensionality a little bit. Uh, Harry, I'm trying to figure out whether we, how much time we can go over. Therese has control of that. I don't, okay. I don't. So. Well, what time uh, is it now, please? Well, you're up to about uh, 56 minutes of presentation. Oh. So. Okay. Well then, how bit, about a little bit more? A little bit more. Okay. So, and I and I apologize for uh, for going a little little long. Um, okay. So now I want to add a little um, little warmth to the clouds. A little little bit of color, just a touch. All right, that helps pop things out a little bit and give it a little more something that's not just white clouds. Okay, and then we'll just add a couple little highlights here.
And then later, there's always a chance to come back and touch things up a little bit. Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate that. Um, uh, I don't know if everybody can see the chats, but Lisa told me to keep going. So I'll keep going for a little bit. All right. So this is, so what I'll do here is I'm going to do this, this row of trees in the back, and then you guys can boot me out if you want. So one important thing is to go back to your, your color theory roots. You got to understand that there's only like three or four green colors that I'm going to use in this piece. So it's important to come back and set the background behind these trees with red and blues and other things that are going to really make these trees pop. And they can be all kinds of wild colors. I mean, it can be pretty crazy. Um, uh, here's, we'll do some orange on this one. It's all about, you know, which trees in front of which and just trusting your, uh, trusting your instincts. And then there are a lot of different greens that could be used for this one. Like, you know, we're just keep it in a functional way. Now I like for my trees, I've been doing less and less detail and I find that I don't really want a ton of detail. So I'm going to come back in here and add some texture in this hollow in this tree that I can see in the reference picture. And then um, let's see, a little yellow. You literally have to tell on everything I know. Yes. <sighs> chicken wings, chicken wings, hot dogs and bologna. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. This video won't come back on, right? Like the guy can't hear me sing it. <laughs> oh, song. That's a beautiful song. Oh, okay. you hear me. I yes. can hear you. I hear you. Please mute yourself. Okay, but sometime you can come to my studio and sing while I paint because that was beautiful. Okay. <laughs> Um, and, and this kind of, this is how it goes with the trees and it carries on with mixing the color. I'm thinking at this point, it pays to stop. I'd like to take you for a whirlwind tour of my studio and the gallery and give you a couple minutes to answer questions and, um, and then not take up all of your night. Does that sound good? Yep. All right, good. All right, let me just get this. Sorry about the shaking. I get my phone out of this mount here. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna step back here. So this is, this is my drafting table. I do most of my work at a drafting table. I have worked at an easel, but it's, um, it's, it gets kind of shaky. You're really pushing pretty hard at times, or I am. Here's uh, a lot of oil pastels. That's kind of how they end up looking after a little bit. Um, and my iPad, which I use for working on um, reference images and uh, portraits. So this is, this is a little, I'm gonna take on a little spin here through my studio. I'm sorry, it's a little dark in here on the Zoom. There's a couple of, couple of pieces that are waiting to get painted. And then more, more work. This, uh, this sycamore was in my presentation. That's the oil painting in the frame. Okay, this is where I paint oil paint over here. I have a couple of easels and all my paint and drawers over there. Um, it's a little dark, but there's my fish tank. They keep me company. And there's my, uh, my desk with a monitor pointed towards the drafting table. It is a little crazy. I had a 42 inch TV. It was kind of big and insane. And then it broke and I had a 55 inch TV and I replaced it. And I don't recommend this to anybody. It's wacky, but it does serve a good purpose. Okay, so this is, this is my studio and um, it's, uh, it's really been a great place to paint. It's been a really nice change, like I said, from my basement, my, my little basement studio with the one prison window. Now from here, I'm gonna take you into the gallery. So out there, out that door, that's exhibit B gallery and my studio is attached to it. So this is the gallery. And if you've been here, then you've seen it. And if not, then this is your, this is your little tour of the gallery. We're in the main gallery. That dark door down there at the end is where people come in, the customers come in that door. And there's a little vestibule there that I have closed off right now. Right now we're in the, on the tail end of our winter group show. It's called Everyday Magic. Um, it's a show that features, we have more than 75, I think there's something like 78 artists in the gallery. Um, you'll see everything from paintings, drawings, photography, hand-pulled prints, jewelry, um, handmade furniture, glass blowing, sculptures, you name it. We pretty much have it at this point. Um, it's kind of been a great experience opening this gallery. It lets me see a lot of things 
from the other side of the equation as an artist, um, uh, it's, just, it's just been really rewarding. This room is our classroom. It's another more, more expanded gallery space. And of course, right now we're not teaching classes because of the pandemic, but, um, and this door takes you out to the vestibule here. So this gives you a rough idea. I think there are a couple of artists on this call who are in the gallery right now. Um, and the show's been good. You know, we've been, um, 2020 has been a weird year, but we, um, we've been working our butts off and um, really just making it work. Um, and then there's our, that's where we, that's where we check people out. There's our, there's our new Satterton shirt that we're excited to be offering now. So that's, uh, let's see here. All right, so that's, that's the dime tour. You've seen the studio, you've seen the gallery, you've seen me make my hands messy. Um, are, there, are there any questions? Is there any, any questions about making art or selling art here? Thank you, Lisa, uh, I appreciate that. I, I just wanna apologize for singing while you were talking, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I enjoyed it. Whoever you are, I enjoyed it. Mike, I'm here with my granddaughter. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. It was very interesting. You're welcome. I'm glad you liked it. Harry, uh, Thanks, could, would you characterize the way you use the pastels like the same way we do oils, like uh, thick over thin or fat over lean? Uh, yeah, that's, that's a pretty good way to put it. I mean, you really, you really do have to start so less is more. So you really have to start from, uh, thank you, Joanne. Um, yeah, you really want to get those like really light base layers down and then build up with thicker layers on top. And yeah. that, now that's my technique, you know, like with whatever the next person does, I don't know. There are other artists working in oil pastel in other ways, but for me, that's, that's worked out. That's the way art is, right? We, yeah. We do whatever you want, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> it's a weird, wild world, and it's up to you. And then, you know, technically, you can um, you can take um, a palette knife and scrape some of that off. All right, I missed that chat from Laura. It says, "Did you ever paint with oil?" And then I couldn't see the rest. Oh. Let me see if I can. With oh, oh, here plein we go. air, plein air painting. Have you ever? Oh yeah, yeah. So I have done, I have done plein air painting. Um, I, I draw all over the place. I do take the oil pastels out, but because of the softness of the wax, if it's too hot or too cold outside, it just really doesn't behave in a way that's um, gonna let me get the end result I want. Uh, summer of 2019, I participated in a fundraiser. Our library had a play on like a dinner and white fundraiser. And I went out and I did a painting from a reference picture while I was there. It was like 87 degrees, it wasn't, wasn't ideal. <laughs> I have done some some actual plein air work with oil pastels, but I I prefer to just keep it as a studio medium. And you did the big mural too, right in town. I did. I did do a two wall, two thousand square foot mural that um, done in like exterior water you know water based house paints that um, that uh, is is a play on like a night and day scenario. It's um, something that I was able to do through. I volunteered in my time. Um, to do it. And um, one of these boards that I'm on paid for the materials. I'm going to just quick check this other chat question that came up. Sure. I mean, so I, I do not use any mediums with the oil pastel. You, um, anything that will mix into oil paint, you can technically mix into the oil pastels. I mean, you can take an oil pastel crayon and chop it up and mix it and basically turn it into a paint. I've heard people talk about doing that. I've never been personally interested in trying it, but you can do some things like that. Um, you can also mix on the surface with a brush, although I guess depending on which type of oil and how much you use would determine the end result. And you have to remember, it's, it doesn't have those drying agents in it and evaporators like an oil, like a modern oil paint. So it doesn't necessarily mean that what you do to it is gonna set. You might end up with a puddle that is always a puddle. You mentioned at the beginning you use a clear, liquefied, more or less vinyl. Is that what you yeah, call yeah. it? Yeah, Sennelier sure. makes Sennelier makes it. Um, thank you, Joan. Um, and it's it's just a clear fixative. And someone had asked how long I wait. I, I try to wait. I try to wait like a week or two 
just to let everything kind of settle out. I do find that over time um, to the touch, the surface does feel a little more set in a certain way, although it will never truly cure. I mean, you could come back in a hundred years and smear it with your finger. I mean, it's just how it is. So, yeah. so I try to give it a little bit of time and then I'll spray it with a fixative and, um, and a couple of coats of that. If you do too many, it just gets too shiny and glossy. So I, I don't really want them to be too crazy. I have played around with different, different fixatives on a lot of test panels over the years. I have done multi-year like light fastness tests and fixative tests and, um, you know, it's been an interesting experiment, but it doesn't, doesn't change too much about what I'm able to do. Let's see. Any other questions? Oh, how large have I worked? The, um, I want to say that that Iceland piece, the 42 inch piece is probably the biggest oil pastel I painted. They just start getting cumbersome because they're on like a rigid board and they get much bigger than that. It has to be a, a thicker board. Um, it just gets, you start getting to the point where a painting weighs like a hundred pounds and it's just not, it's not easy to send home with a customer. So I don't usually do it. I have done oil paintings that are five or six feet wide. And I have done the, the 2000 square foot mural and a bunch of other things like that. So I'm happy to work big when I can. If, you, if anybody has questions, um, if you can remember my name, Harry Boardman, board, board like a board of wood, B-O-A-R-D-M-A-N. That's my website, harryboardman.com. You can email me through there. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at, at Harry Boardman Artist. Um, Gary and a lot of other people here know who I am. So feel free to reach out. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Patricia. Um, I don't know, maybe that's Pat DeVirgilis. Um, thanks, Mary. Um, so reach out. If you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. Okay. Thank you. That's okay. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Harry. It was really yeah. great. I, I think yeah. everyone enjoyed it. it was yeah, quite great. Thanks, thanks. Oh, I saw a question about hours. The, uh, the gallery is open Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. And the name of the gallery is Exhibit B Gallery. And that's the website, exhibitbgallery.com. And the hours are right at the top of the homepage. Okay. You're, Thank you're you welcome. very much. Bye-bye. Thank right. you, Thank everyone, you. for joining Thank us you, tonight. Larry. Okay, we're at ten, one, one hour and 10 minutes. I think we're signing off. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Thank Be safe. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Stay, stay well. Stay safe. Thanks very much, Gary. Okay, and, Pat. And, and Harry, if he's still there, it was great. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. <laughs>